Section 3020A education law proceedings against said employee. I'm sorry. Be suspended with pay. Correction. Oh. Suspended with pay during the pendency of Section 3020A education law proceedings against said employee. Okay. Second. Second. All those in favor? No. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. All right, we now reach the portion of our meeting where we welcome the public to address the board. And if you've signed up, um, taking the order in which you've signed up, I want to remind you you're limited to two minutes. Um, it's not a conversation. And the board clerk will um, let you know, notify you when you're approaching your two minutes. And um, there are a lot of people here tonight. So if we get to 30 minutes of public comment, we're going to call it at 30 minutes. And you may stay, and we'll have a second public comment at the end of the meeting after it's on the agenda. So, first on the list for um, public participation. Has anybody signed up? Okay, please identify yourself and speak into the microphone sure. because we can hear you in here, but we can't always hear on live stream. Okay. Thank you. Tell me if you can't hear me. Uh, my name is Dean Tambori. Um, I'm with uh, Laborers Local 17. We're out of Newburgh, New York. We've had several meetings uh, regarding the project labor agreement for your upcoming and currently bidding uh, school project. Um, I, I think um, maybe the board I don't, would like you to reconsider your vote of no for the project labor agreement. I think there's a lot more information. I think maybe um, you don't have all the information. Um, I, I think it's that important. That's why I'm here tonight. If anybody else has any other questions, um, uh, Dr. Paladino, you, know, you, you still have my contact information. Can you please get it to the board if, if anybody else has any other questions? Because I read a few of the comments in the paper, and I don't think it's the correct information. So somewhere along the line, I, I think we, we, uh, we miscommunicated somewhere. I'd like to uh, uh, straighten that out, and I think it's uh, that important. And um, please reconsider the vote for the project labor agreement for the school project. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, anyone else wish to address the board? I'm next. Thanks. Hi, my name is Mike Ham. Um, I live here in Kingston, New York. Uh, I'm also a representative for Local 825, the Operating Engineers. Uh, I, too, am here to ask you to uh, reconsider your vote of no against the Project Labor Agreement for the Kingston High School Project. Uh, as Dean has already spoke about it, uh, we feel as though there's been a lot of miscommunication on it and some maybe misconceptions on it, okay? I read through in the paper and I talk to a lot of people in the community and I get hit with uh, the fact that union prices 
would drive up the cost of the project, which is unfounded, okay? Prevailing wage is New York standard for this project, municipality project. Um, the other thing I was just a little taken back about was that, uh, you know, some of the people said that we were very intimidating and that threats were made. And uh, I was at all those meetings. We didn't threaten anybody. You know, we came here as, you know, I live in this community and I pay taxes in this community. I came here with the idea that if we could save you five to $11 million in taxpayer money, I thought that was a great idea. I didn't see anybody else walk into the room to present this, okay? Um, and, you know, with the added savings on top, if the due diligence was done, I'm sure there is even added savings, okay? And uh, once again, I'm asking you to reconsider, you know, using the PLA for this project. And Dr. Padolino, I know you have my information too. I am local. I live right on East Chester Street. I've lived here for 30 years, okay? Well, 50 years, I lived across the river in Port Moon, 20 of them, okay? And, uh, you know, you can feel free to call me at any time. I'm, I have information available at all times, okay? Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else would like to address the board at this time? Okay, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Dr. Penalino. We have some special guests this evening. We do have some special guests. As, as some of you know, but not, uh, not everyone in the room knows or everyone watching at home knows, uh, a couple weeks ago, maybe a month ago, we had a, a very serious event happen at one of our basketball games. Uh, in, the, in the heat of the basketball game, a close game coming down into the fourth quarter, um, there was an emergency in the stands. A, a, a young man, a, a high school graduate in the stands had collapsed. Um, and was desperately in need of, of attention. Three members of our staff rushed to his attention, and um, without going on and on, because I, I know, um, at least Harry and Glenn, I know very well, and they don't want me to go on and on about, about them, um, they saved this young man's life. And um, he wanted to Want to take this opportunity, um, and, and I'm happy to say that the young man is now doing well. He's back attending, uh, he's a regular uh, attendee at our basketball games and our sporting events, and he's back attending. Um, and uh, so, again, it, it was a story that uh, ended well, but it ended well because of the fast thinking and the uh, bravery and the huge hearts of the people who work here at the Kansas City School District. So, I would like to um, call them up and um, give them this appreciation in the, on behalf of the Board of Education, um, and I think really of the whole community for what they do for our kids every day. So I will do that. Our SRO, Officer Harry Walden. Rachel Myers. Okay. Um, as we move forward through the uh, superintendent's report, uh, next, we have a brief presentation from our district superintendent, Dr. Charles Corey, who is here to talk to us about the proceeds programs. Thank you, Paul, and Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, one district I followed a group of kindergarten students who did a presentation. You know, I, I never can follow anything that's easy to follow. Congratulations <laughs> to, to, to those three individuals. It's, uh, great, great your work uh, with the kids. Um, Basically, every year I come out and do an area of focus, where we are in El Scoboses, where we're headed. Um, and I, I have a, the PowerPoint in front of you. Uh, I'm not going to show it. 
basically uh, to highlight some of the things that have taken place. Uh, the first one is the fact that we opened up our Hudson Valley uh, Pathways PTEC program here at, Kings at the Kingston High School uh, site uh, in the Carnegie Center. Uh, as most of the board knows, the tuition for that program is about $17,000 per student. All of it is uh, BOCES aidable, uh, so that essentially most districts in the county get about 50 cents back on the dollar uh, for uh, payment of those tuition uh, fees. For those of you who don't know, it's a six-year program. Uh, students enter in ninth grade. They stay in the program for six years. They exit with a high school diploma uh, from their local high school. It isn't an Ulster Boces diploma. We don't give out diplomas. It's from their local high school. Uh, but at the end of the six years, they receive their high school diploma as well as an associate's degree or an associate in science degree uh, from one of the, the local community college. Most of the kids in the program right now would get it from Ulster Community College in either the area of advanced manufacturing or computer science. We've also been in discussions with uh, the folks at SUNY New Paltz and you know, have had many discussions about eligible students being able to continue their program at SUNY New Paltz in the College of Engineering if that was what they chose to do. Uh, and, and certainly they've helped us in the design of the program, so uh, the backwards design of the program from what they need to see in their students. I should emphasize, that six-year program, high school diploma and associate's degree, is at no cost to the parents. Okay, so that is a, uh, we, we won a grant that uh, the governor uh, put in his budget. Uh, in, we were one of the first 16 awardees of that grant. Uh, since the, la the last budget, they awarded, I believe, 10 more. Uh, and I suspect the governor will continue to fund this program uh, moving forward. Kingston has enrolled 12 of our 16 students in that program. And I put on the PowerPoint a big thank you. We really appreciate your commitment to the program and mostly your commitment to uh, the students uh, in Kingston High School. This is not a program for everybody. It's a program for kids who are not traditionally college bound. And uh, these students are thriving. I know Dr. Catalino is a frequent visitor to the program and, and sees the kind of work that we're doing there. We, it's a project-based uh, program. We work with our industry partners in the Council of Industry. And we are just now beginning the recruitment of our second class on the second slide, I, I, I excerpted uh, an article that just was appeared in the Sovereignty's Post Star, uh, highlighting the program. To give you an example of the kind of work that they do, every month they go out to one of our industry partners where the executives of those industries present a problem of practice that they're facing. Um, they, they then take that problem of practice back to school and using the core curriculum content, using the core subjects, they study and work on solutions to that problem. And then a month later, they travel back to the industry uh, and present their uh, findings and recommendations to the, the executive board of, those in, of that industry. This past month, they went to Mediacom, which is, I think, the fourth or fifth largest telecommunications um, company in the United States. They are based in Orange County, but they serve mostly the southwestern <coughs> part of the United States with cable TV, wireless uh, internet, and so on. Um, they were given the problem by the executives of maximizing the last 50 feet of wireless connectivity, okay? Um, because that's the, the area, if you have wireless in your home, you know that there are places that are stronger than other places, or even in a school building. So how do you maximize the last 50 feet uh, in terms of usage? Uh, they have come back now to school. They're learning all about uh, wireless communication. They've actually mapped the Carnegie site with uh, st signal strength. And uh, within a couple of weeks, they'll be traveling back down and presenting their solutions to the industry partners. These are kids, again, who out of exiting eighth grade were not traditionally college bound. And they're standing in front of executives of major corporations presenting ideas and solutions. This is, I think, the fourth uh, industry uh, that they've visited since the beginning of the school year. So we're thrilled uh, with, with the kind of work that they're doing and certainly would invite you uh, to, to stop in at the Carnegie Center at any time to see 12 of your kids and 16 of the kids from the entire county. Um, the second goal was uh, is a budget goal for us in this area uh, for the 15-16 school year. As, as, as the business official here, Alan and, and uh, Paul know, that we, we have to shift our retirement, payment of our retirement costs from uh, where they are presently charged, which is in the COSERS that you have when you do business with us, to the administrative budget. Uh, we are doing that in the 15-16 school year. 
In the 2008-09 school year, the controller came out, identified the fact that we were charging uh, in the wrong place uh, according to uh, the, the commissioner's regulations for BOCES. Uh, and we had also accumulated a fund over, since I think the early 90s, uh, to essentially soften the blow of retirement costs. Uh, BOCES is not allowed by statute uh, to collect a reserve fund for that purpose. Local school districts are, but BOCES are not specifically allowed to do that. So the controller directed us to, to uh, return the fund uh, and accepted our recommendation that we would follow the lead of our local districts. And over the past several years, we've been drawing down that fund. Uh, we have been charging um, the fees for, for post-retirement benefits in our COSERS. We collect them, but we don't expense them there. Okay, we uh, expense them against the fund. So the fund, which used to be about $12.4 million, is now down about $8.2 million. And because of the accelerating cost of health care and so on, we estimate that in four or five years, that fund will be totally exp expended. So presently, we charge it in the COSERS, but we don't expense it there, which means that, as you all know, any money not spent in a BOCES budget must be returned to the component district. So you get that money refunded to you. Uh, the idea being that when that fund is drawn down, it won't be a new expense for you. Uh, so right now you get, it's an in and out in terms of our budgeting. Uh, the problem is it's expensed in the, it's charged in the COSERS and it needs to be charged in our administrative budget. That was one of the directives of the controller several years ago. We're, di we're making that move this year. You will see a 70, about a 75% increase in our administrative budget because we're moving all of those expenses into the administrative budget. What you will also see is a reduction in all of our unit prices in the COSERS because we are drawing, we are removing those charges from the COSERS. So all of our COSER prices will go down. All of the money will be, will be surplus, and so you'll get the refund. The only difference will be you will get the refund based, and administration is based on student enrollment, whereas in the COSERS it was based on level of participation. Uh, Kingston City School District has about 30% of the total enrollment in, in Ulster County, so you will get about a 30% return of the total cost of, uh, of the uh, health care cost for Ulster BOCES, the retired health care cost for Ulster BOCES. This would all be easy if we could, if BOCES were allowed to keep a reserve account. We're not. And I don't suspect in this economic climate, even though there's been talk in Albany about allowing us to do that, I don't suspect that they're, they're of the, uh, the belief to allow us to, to set up reserves. The second slide just kind of shows you is a summary. In 14, 15, where, or the third slide, where, the, uh, where we are today, which is a summary of what I just said, uh, and where from about 2015 to the 2018-19 school year it will go. I just want to make you aware that when we do our budget presentation in, in, in March or April, you will see that 75% increase in the administrative budget. I know how boards, they will look at that right-hand column, business administrators will circle it, and you'll say, what's going on? I want you to remember this conversation, okay? This is what's going on, because you will also see unit prices um, down significantly. Uh, and that's the second area. We had made a commitment to hold our unit prices down to under uh, to one percent or less. Um, I gave you a brief summary. We've finished our unit prices. I think they've been delivered or will be delivered to business officials very shortly. Twenty-two of our unit prices will be reduced. Fifty-six of them will have no increase. One hundred and sixty-eight will have increases of less than one percent. Ten unit prices will increase one percent, and only two unit prices will increase more than one percent. And those two unit prices that are increasing more than one percent are posters that have people involved, and that's a salary issue. I mean, their salaries went up by more than one percent, so that's the only thing in that particular coaster. I did want to point out one other thing: uh, that our administrative budget, if I took out the increase, the seventy-five percent increase. It's actually about an 82% increase that's caused by the health care being transferred in. The rest of the cost of our administrative budget, the non-insurance cost, has actually been reduced from last year to this year by 8%. So we've taken our non-health care administrative budget down by about $140,000. That's about an 8% reduction. Uh, and you'll see that reported that, uh, that way. Um, then I wanted to just briefly talk about the uh, 
some of the curricular changes that we're making up at CTE. Um, as, as many of you who, who may be aware, there's a tremendous shortage of programmers in the United States. And many of our programs are technical in nature, and they, they, they kind of surface cover programming. But we're going to make a more concerted effort to emphasize coding or programming, computer programming, in all of the technical subjects that we teach up at CTE. Uh, there are particular areas of need across the country. There are many, many fine programs that uh, kind of in a fun, project-based way introduce computer programming to students. Uh, and, and we believe we have the students who are already there for a technical education uh, who could benefit by a, a greater exposure. So that you'll see across the board in all of our subjects up at CT, in many of our subjects, some of the non-technical ones you won't see it. And we're also shifting more to uh, a more uh, concentrated, multidisciplinary, project-based approach. Uh, you know, the problems of practice in the real world don't exist in a single discipline. They always involve multiple disciplines. And so we're emphasizing, uh, use an example, our robotics teacher is working with our welding teacher because in the world today, much of the welding that is done in the world is done using robots. And so the kids traditionally will learn you know, hands-on welding, and they will still learn that, but they're also going to be learning how to use robots to do robotic welding uh, to make them better prepared for the world that they're, they're, they're moving into. We're also introducing, and we're in discussions, I know, with Kingston, amongst other districts, uh, new special education programs uh, designed to reduce the number of out-of-county places. Paul has been uh, you know, vocal, as all of the superintendents have, about the number of students, uh, special education students, who are being placed out of the county. We've kind of done a needs analysis. We're working with uh, special ed directors and others to look at programs that we can build uh, inside of Ulster County that will allow uh, school districts in Ulster County to keep their kids inside the county. Um, the last two slides really are, are uh, and I've given you a bigger, don't look at the slides, look at the other piece because it's a little bit easier to read. What I wanted to show you is the last uh, five years of participation with both these programs to give you a little bit of a sense in a straight line manner of how, uh, how the COSER world works and, and um, you know, how much business you have done with Ulster BOCES. You can see 10-11, uh, your total contracted BOCES or COSER participation was a little over $9 million. Uh, about $2 million of that was not eligible for BOCES aid because it was aided in other areas. That would be special ed transportation and ELA. So the eligible part of that $9 million, and by the way, those three areas receive aid from other areas, special ed aid, transportation aid, DOL aid. Um, and so the state never replicates aid programs. If you get aid in special education, you don't get those these aid. Uh, so of the $9 million total business you did with us, $7 million uh, was eligible for BOCES aid. Your aid ratio back in 2010-11 was 52.7%. Uh, BOCES aid that was based on eligible cost of participation that you received was $2.7 million. You then also received a refund of surplus in the coasters you participated in of about $900,000. So the net cost of your participation in our BOCES programs was about $3.3 million. Said very simply, you got about seven point, about a $7 million worth of services that cost you, at the end of the day, when you deduct all of the aid you received, about $3.3 million. And, and as you can follow that track, uh, you've been fairly good, great customers for us, and hopefully you're satisfied with our services, because you can see there's been a little bit of up and down in your uh, service requests, but certainly uh, 13, 14, uh, you did $9.4 million worth of business. You will be receiving, it's an unaudited number, this is what's been submitted for you up to state ed, $3.1 million in BOCES aid, of that 9.4 million, 76 was available, was eligible for BOCES aid. You'll receive your aid ratio went up to about 50, 58.8. Next year it'll, or this current year, it'll be about 63.2 percent. So 63 cents on every eligible dollar will come back to you in the form of aid. So you'll get about 3.1 million uh, in aid uh, next year, and then the refund that. If we don't delay open tomorrow because of cold, around 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, I'll be handing uh, Alan and Paul a check for about $1.1 million as a refund of surplus 
uh, from the previous year. So your $7.6 million of eligible aid cost you about $3.3 million net. Uh, so I just wanted you as a board to be aware that, um, and I think doing business with both CDCs is, is you know, cost effective way of doing business. I know Paul uh, and Alan uh, agree with that. Uh, the, the next thing I wanted to show you is where are your kids? I know many of you come up to our annual meeting where you, you know, uh, have dinner with us. We, we present the budget and you usually, at the end, the dinner is prepared by our culinary students, many of whom uh, come from Kingston. I just basically gave you a list of where, uh, where your kids are enrolled in our programs. Uh, CTE, right now you have 238 students in our CTE programs. You can see, uh, you know, uh, cosmetology, criminal justice, health occupations, look like they're the top three, but you have a large number of students in all of our programs. In our New Visions programs, you have 11 students, um, New Visions Health, seven, and uh, four in the Advanced Robotics and Engineering program. In our Alternative Education program, of the 41 kids in that program, you have 11. Our Special Ed programs, uh, you have 32 out of the 79 kids in that program. Uh, and overall, you have uh, 300 and, uh, well, the Pathways Academy I already mentioned, you have 12. And overall, you have 304 of your high school, um, well, it's high school, and, and uh, except for the special ed students, high school age students uh, out of our total enrollment of 1,053. So about 30% uh, of the enrollment in BOCES programs comes from Kingston. And for that, we thank you. As always, I'm available to come up here anytime you need me to answer questions. I would love to give you a snapshot of what's happening in Albany and State Ed, but I really have no idea what's happening in Albany and State Ed. Uh, the commissioner, my boss, uh, has left uh, to go down to Washington, as you all know. There's an interim commissioner. Uh, they're doing a search. You read the letters that have gone back and forth between the governor and the Board of Regents, and so uh, we might as well all just sit in the bleachers and watch the, uh, the drama unfold. So uh, with that, any questions, I would be happy to answer. I do want to introduce uh, Pat Rausch, uh, Chris Farrell from the BOCE Board. Chris is the Kingston rep. Uh, Pat is the Vice President of the Board from New Falls. Uh, Warren Donnie, my Assistant Superintendent for Business, and uh, Laurie Cassell, my Deputy Superintendent. Um, so, yes, Rob. You, you mentioned, so our administrative cost will increase about 75% or 82 you said? When you net out the decline, it, it roughly is about 75%. Is that the same for all the yeah. components districts? Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Corey, I was very excited about the PTA program, you know, when we started out. And we started last year with 16 students. Are they all returned following the program? I think we had one in and out. I think one yeah. student left the program, uh, and one we, we had kids who wanted to come in, and I believe there was an in and out, and then I think we started with 15, and we've added another student. Yeah, so we, we've gone up. Uh, you know, we've gotten a tremendous amount of interest uh, from uh, parents. Uh, parents read the articles. They go to their school districts. It, the interesting thing is, and I applaud you because you and Paul, uh, because he's championing this in, in for Kingston students, that's not the same throughout the county. Um, sometimes superintendents say, we're not going to participate. Sometimes superintendents say, we'll give you one seat, that, that kind of thing. And so um, that's between a parent and their local board of education. I, we can only provide the program, and then hopefully people will see the advantage of it. Um, that tuition, you know, $17,000 sounds like a lot. If I was to, our CTE programs, for instance, are half-day programs. The tuition for the CTE programs are right around $10,000 for half a day. So that CTE program costs about $20,000, you know, for a full-day program. Our alternative education program costs about $22,000 a program, so $17,000. Which, if it's if it's too, if we have money left over, that will be refunded as surplus. You know, so um, we we are, and I believe there will be a small refund from that seventeen thousand dollars, and you know, whatever that dollar amount is per student, it'll be multiplied by twelve, and then there's eight on top of that. So uh, we think it's a great it's a great program, and if you have an opportunity to stop by, just let Paul know or myself know, and we'll make arrangements for you to. See the kids in action. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. 
had a question about the chart of the student participation in Ulster Bosey's program. Sure. Yeah. Um, under special education, are, the way it appears that Kingston is filling both the Alpha and Pi program? Is that Alpha slash A? Does that mean out of eight seats? No, no, there's multiple sections. Okay. Yeah, there's multiple sections. <laughs> yes. okay. I just wanted to clarify yeah. that. And also, um, you said that you were making a commitment to prevent out of district placements. I just, out of curiosity, um, or in Ulster placements in like Goshen schools, is that still, is that still considered in district? No, no. Uh, or in county? Uh, that's not out. That would be out of, okay. any OU, uh, Orange Ulster, yeah. both these programs would be out of county. And that is a double whammy for Ulster districts. Uh, Alan would tell you that they, you incur a transportation charge, uh, obviously, because you're transporting the kids to those programs. But in addition, uh, many times, and I'm not sure the policy of R.H. Ulster Bosey, there's an administrative charge because you're participating as a non-component district. So there's like a double whammy for going out of county. You know, um, and that's why we're looking at who are the kids who are leaving the county? What are the things that we can do? Uh, it's hard to, to change a parent's mind because there's a whole process in terms of those placements. Uh, so some parents, you know, even if we had a program, it may it would be up to the local child study team to just, to make the recommendation to bring a student back, and particularly that could be a challenging conversation to have with the parents. So we're looking, you know, kind of um, with a forward view, who are the kids that we could bring back, and let's build those programs here in the county. So in my participation in CSE meetings, I have noticed a sharp decrease in the amount of recommendations that CSE is making to these some of these schools. So. I just want to clarify. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also on this list, I see that there are virtual AP programs that are offered, but I don't see... Yeah, it wasn't... I'll get that number for you. I, I didn't get the number before I left the office today, but I, I'm not sure how many. Um, did I you know, participate in some? Uh, Paul, did you know? We did not last year. Last year. We, we would emphasize that this year, so I don't know how, if, if we have any, or if so, how many, but we One of the things that, you know... Paul and I and Alan and others get hundreds of emails a day. And one of the emails that came out over vacation, uh, so it might have gotten lost in the shuffle, was the there's money left in that virtual AP grant, that money, um, and the state is allowing us to use that money to provide SAT preparation courses for eligible juniors. Uh, even if you had never participated in the virtual AP grant, you can. Uh, essentially get money to hire teachers to teach an SAT preparation course for juniors. So I'd encourage, and I, I know Paul will follow up on it, encourage you to do that. Um, you know, and, and it's based on school size, and uh, the initial allocations are based on numbers of students in a particular school, so you're one of the largest schools in the region, because it's a regional grant, so you would get a large share of, of the available funds to do that if you're interested. Yes, sir. Just a comment that I wanted to say thank you because uh, it's so important. Thanks to you and your board and your associates to come here and keep us updated. Not only us as a school board, but parents and uh, public members of the public as well. Because I still think there's that old misconception out there, which you know I'm sure you're aware of as well, that both season yet look at all the new and exciting programs that you're enabling our students to participate. Yeah, it's not the old CTE. You know, it's very, very different. And, and we applaud the regions for opening up the multiple pathways to graduation where CTE will, will kind of have an equal footing as, as we move forward. So, uh, you know, again, I, I thank you for your support because, uh, you know, again, 30% of our students come from Kingston. And, uh, you know, it doesn't happen unless the Kingston Board and administration support our program. So, appreciate that. Uh, I want to congratulate you on your emphasis on uh, computer programming and coding. Uh, I think that's really important. I listened to a program of the Commonwealth Club in December, Marissa Meyer, who is the number 20 employee of Google and now CEO of Yahoo, mentioned that uh, uh, nationwide 200,000 students take the AP Calculus exam and only 30,000, or less than 30,000, take the AP computer science exam. Uh, and the job opportunities are probably reversed. Right. Application programming, you know, the programming for our smartphones and, and smart devices is exploding, and there just aren't programmers. Yeah. So it's, and it's an area that our kids, if they, if they dabbled in it, would, would, you know, flourish. As opposed to most people's 
use of calculus after they yes, absolutely. finish the course. That's <laughs> rather minimal. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you for all your support. Thanks. <laughs>
B63, okay. So we have pulled P105, B is in boy 57, uh, 58, 59, 60, 62, and 63. <laughs> and CUR07. <laughs> huh? It does. Okay. So, do you want to just get an extra donation? Okay. Mrs. Collins, would you like to read the donation? Um, that, will we, will we get to that? Sure. Okay. Um, uh, actually, if you wouldn't mind, can we read the donations and then we, we, don't, we don't have to pull those resolutions. We can go ahead. Right. It's that agenda. Many of these uh, that are pulled are donations that we want to recognize. And they do appear in the agenda, so just to, once again, um, publicly um, acknowledge them. P58 is a donation from the PTA of Ernest C. Meyer School in the amount of $1,500, um, which is a nice gift. P59 is for Kingston High School, who is the recipient of a generous grant from the Community Foundation of the Hudson Valley, $2,500, and is going to be used to field, fund the field trip, um, the Cape Ann Whale Watch, which is always a great trip. B60 is a, target, a donation from Target, excuse me, from the John F. Kennedy Elementary School, $207.88. And B63 is the donation, we've read about it um, recently, it's been publicized from the Hudson Valley Economic Development Corporation that donated the MakerBot three, Replicator 3D printer and accessories to Kingston High School. We're very fortunate to have that. So, Thank you very much for reading the donation. That leaves us with um, resolutions P105, P57, B62, and CUR07 still pulled. I'll we'll entertain a motion to accept uh, the consent agenda minus P105, B57, and 62 and CUR07. So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? of accepting the consent agenda minus those resolutions. Please signify by saying aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay. Mm -hmm. Motion carries. All right. P105. Mm -hmm. Mr. Okay. Um, Mr. Childs is moving that. Second. Second. Any discussion? Uh, I ask this to be pulled because I think it's a very significant thing with one of our uh, teachers um, received their uh, Tenure. And I think it should be uh, congratulated, and they should be congratulated. So I pulled it for that purpose. Yes. Is she here? Yes, she is. Yes. Yes. And comment that Ms. Leonard is here, um, and we would like to congratulate you on receiving tenure. Um, if you have it, you're you're. In a weird time of year to get tenure because, but you will be invited at the end of the year to the ten, to oh. our tenure ceremony also and recognized there as well. Okay. But like I said, congratulations. Uh, as I say every time we, re we award tenure, to someone tenure isn't given, it's earned. Uh, I know you work with Dr. Perez and she speaks very highly of you and you have great evaluations from her and her letter of recommendation for you uh, made it clear that you deserve this honor and uh, we look forward to you continuing your career and finishing your career at the Kingston City School District. Thank you very much. $9,900 per student, 
and the cost of special ed education, which is about $35,000 a student. Um, so when we have a 23% classification rate in the Kingston City School District, you know, that's 20, 23% of our students who were spending $25,000 per student more than with our special ed students, or with our regular ed students, and it's one of the reasons that education is so expensive. Okay, all those in favor of B57 please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries. And B62. Um, I entertain a motion. B62, which is the disposal of the external audit. Okay, external audit, I'm sorry. Um, well, I'll move that first. Okay, and I'll second that. And discussion. Um, this is the authorizing the uh, uh, contract for it. External auditor for two years with Raymond G. Pluser, CPA, uh, who has provided uh, external auditing services um, for many years in the district. Uh, we had three uh, responses to our request for proposal, and um, the uh, Auditing Finance Committee is recommending that um, the uh, Award be made to Raymond G. Cruiser for another three years. Thank you, Mr. Shanley. All those in favor of B62, please in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Mm -hmm. Okay, motion carries. Curriculum 07. CUR 07. Um, I just have a question about this because in August, on August 6th, there was some um, textbooks that we had ordered, I thought, for 60 textbooks for the same subject. We did. Very good. Okay. <laughs> Very observant. We did. And when we ordered them, we were um, informed from the, from the publishing company that they were no longer in print. Okay. So we had to go back through the process of finding new books for this same course. But now we're only ordering 30? Now we're only ordering 30. At double the price, though. Yes. Okay, and it's private here. So we oh, do have okay. the book here. We do have here. But it's the same, okay. Yes. Yeah. So that that has not started yet? But no, the course has started. They've been, they've been working with their old textbook for this course. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, all those in favor of CUR07? Okay. I'll entertain a motion to move to your RO7. So moved. Second. This is where I had the discussion. All those in favor. <laughs> I'm going to follow. Yeah. All those in favor of CUR07, please say by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. And that marks the end of the consent agenda. Thank you very much. And now we are on to Board of Education. And I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Chikovitz, who's going to give the Curriculum Instruction Committee uh, notes, or as we call it now, the Teaching and Learning Committee. Teaching and Learning Committee. Yeah. Okay. It's a good turn that community has had, as always. We began by talking about where it's taken us to transition initiatives, so the things that we um, put in place when we transitioned um, for a new configuration. We talked about PDL, and there had just been a um, professional development session about project-based learning and integrating it into the way that we teach here so that it becomes more than just one class that kids get to take every now and then, but it becomes a way of teaching in this district. So um, hopefully that kind of professional development can continue and we'll move more fully in that direction. Um, plus this year, this fifth grade has remained the same, fifth grade course remains similar to what was last year. The sixth grade course now incorporates more language. Um, ENR has been um, incorporated, kind of folded back into the regular classroom. There's some um, there's some differences between the two middle schools, and we're waiting to get more information back about how that actually functions in the two places. Um, Peaceful school bus is, is proceeding. It's being integrated with school communities 
uh, bus drivers are coming into schools and meeting with kids and principals, and it's moving along. Um, we talked about ELA. ELA, or so we're still in the process of adapting our ELA curriculum. We're adapting the Common Core. We're adapting expeditionary learning. Um, teacher feedback from la last year really indicated that between expeditionary learning and the Common Core, there wasn't enough writing. Teacher felt there wasn't enough writing. Teacher felt there wasn't enough science and there wasn't enough social studies. So there's really been an effort to um, include those things back into the curriculum and to really teach ALA in some disciplines through science and through social studies. Um, and also to maintain the spirit of the expeditionary mode, which is really also project based, um, but adjusting the content and integrating more science and social studies and also more about writing. Um, we're still working on adapting the math modules, um, and that's an ongoing process. Um, we really provide frameworks for the teachers to teach it. Um, we talked about the extended day pilot, which is still a something that's on our board goals that we adopted in the spring. Um, we are working, the administration is working in some instances with the community-based organizations that it had worked with in the proposal that it had been submitted last year mm -hmm. with the extended day programs that are currently in place in top, through TOPS. So um, a great example that we talked a lot about actually is Wild Earth. It's one community-based organization that we're working with. Hopefully they'll do it in after-school programs. Um, through the TOPS program, maybe even also at Miller. Um, and that's one relationship that we're hoping to continue to expand. That's what I can Okay, I think that's all. Is there anything else that you want to add? Is there? We're on the mm -hmm. um, Our next meeting is February 26th at 9 30. Thank you very much. Are there any questions for Director Paul? We'll move on to the policy committee. Uh, we're having first reading of three policies. We're pulling uh, policy number 5500, student records, will be reconsidered in February. So we have before us three policies this evening for first reading. Correct, and they are uh, attached to the agenda, to tonight's agenda. The first one is policy 1900, school family community partnership. The second one is policy 5,110 school attendance boundaries. Mm -hmm. uh, and the last would be 8635 information security breach and notification. Um, our next meeting is this Friday, the 9th. <coughs> and actually, we're going to be discussing Dr. Padalino had sent us some, uh, Dr. some input on school attendance boundaries. So we're going to be discussing that one on Friday. That was a concern at the beginning of the school year with uh, reshuffling some of the more crowded schools. Um, and in addition to reviewing our usual policies that we have to do moving forward, just looking at some philosophical discussions we're going to be having, one that is about fundraising, and another is going to be revisiting the homework policy. We keep hearing some concerns about that. So once again, we're meeting Friday the night at 9 a.m. Right here. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Shaughnessy, the Planning Auditor, Planning Auditor, Planning Auditor. Um, yeah. The Planning Committee met on uh, December 23rd. Uh, we reviewed the Treasurer's report, uh, the Claims Auditor report for November. Um, I see that we don't have. Uh, numbers assigned. So I'll just combine these uh, and, and, uh, and, and uh, move that the board accept the uh, claims auditor report and the treasurer's report for uh, November as recommended by the <coughs> audit and finance committee. Second one. Okay, all those in favor of accepting the claims auditor report and treasurer's report? Um, Please signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. Anyone opposed? Motion's carried. I think we also discussed, I don't remember if we discussed it, but this is the previous one, the you know, external auditor, which we acted on um, moments ago. And also, there's going to be a um, uh, the second uh, uh, budget development forum. Uh, is that January 20th or 22nd? 29th. 29th. Oh, January 29th. 6 p.m. 
So it's a Thursday. It will be here at 6 p.m. on January 29th. But the next meeting of the Island Finance Committee meeting will be, of the committee will be on um, Tuesday, um, January 27th. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. designated someone to, to be able to come to the school to represent them. It was a uh, good discussion uh, relative to directions that we want to go in. Dr. Padalino had uh, a sort of an agenda, which he may be able to share with us, of, of, uh, of items that we were looking at and direction that we want to go in. So I will move to him. I, we, we did have, as, as Reverend Chancellor, we had representation from every building, which was great. Um, and, and we had representation from you know, our teachers and our administrators and the Board of Education as well. So that was, it was nice to have a, a larger group. And what we were looking to do is, is use our district leadership team and our district goals as a framework of where we're moving and make sure that what we're doing with the diversity factor is adding to those goals, is part of those are integrated in how we are we're doing this. Um, we decided we would have, uh, we would make sure that we, one of us would serve as a liaison between the district leadership team and the diversity cadre, and we also wanted to build on what we've already accomplished. And one of the things when the diversity cadre started up when I came three years ago, when I became the um, kind of the uh, administrative member, um, we wanted to get some training. That was going to be you know, some some time for professional development for all some inclusion professional development for all of our teachers or for all of our faculty and staff. And we decided we would start um, with the board of education. And you all remember we did the board of education. And then we went and we did the administration. The administration did a two day training over the summer uh, one year. So then we then during the school year in our first um, September not not this September but September before we took we all of our support staff. Uh, went, underwent uh, some inclusion training. So we, now our next step is, there. we still have not reached to the teachers. So we want to get, you know, into, the, we want to get teachers into some of this. Um, and we're trying to decide how does that training look? Is it going to look like it did for the first four groups that we did or is it going to look differently? So that, that's our next conversation. So what's this going to look like? Is it going to be, um, you know, a start up on a professional development day maybe in September, part of a professional development day with some, with this, we all know, you know, nothing, nothing sticks if we do it once and then move on. What, what is the program of this that we're going to do? So that, that's our next, so I gave, um, I don't know why I did this, but I gave myself the homework of coming back with some, some options um, for the, for the diversity cadre to consider and talk more. But I know based on the conversation that was going on on that table and that we had to force them to leave, um, you know, at the, at, the hour, at the hour that we planned on staying, um, people are going to bring other ideas to the table when we meet again. And did you set a date? We set a date for January 22nd. Any questions? All right. Any other old business? Yeah. New business. New business. Any new business? Mr. Shaughnessy. Um, we had in our board packet a, uh, a state preliminary results of the 2014 statewide evaluation uh, APPR. Mm -hmm. um, I don't recall. I think I think it's been mentioned, but what what is the breakdown? Of Kingston City School District of the heady class, heady results or ratios. Um, you know, off the top of my head, I don't want to say that the exact numbers. I mean, we we were, I believe, we were at ninety-eight percent of our teachers were highly effective or effective, with two percent in developing and or um, ineffective. Yes, I, get the, I think I'm, I'm 
most of the sharp growth, but on the home front. And Mrs. Nakarada was nodding her head saying, you are correct. So. And um, I don't know, can anyone explain, uh, if anyone has it or can we do it next time, um, page 13 of that report, Mr. Clark? <coughs> I think they're trying to give you the, uh, the bell curve in a different way. Thank 
figure out how to really get the word out to the community. Perhaps you can use the um, superintendent's wording from the round of really as mm -hmm. Okay. We'll be starting, this is just clear, so we're starting our old petition or we're going to add, ask our district to add on to the Rodeo petition? They're all coming together. So, okay. all, so it, it essentially will be all the, hopefully all of the merchants on the districts will, will stay together. So. And, and others, others um, not do that to my forgiveness. Yes. Balancing the budget on that. Yeah, I'm clear what it was. It was just how and this piggybacks on um, initiatives that are happening really across the state. So it wouldn't just be Ulster County voice, it's most of them. But we would find it. And we are supporting mm -hmm. Milltown. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. And you're getting that yeah. It was in the consent agenda. Okay, in the consent agenda, which we just passed that resolution to support Milltown and Schenectady. Is Schenectady or Milltown? That file uh, against the state. Okay. Um, any other new business? Um, two pieces of new business that I The first that we have a coffee and conversation scheduled for Tuesday, the thirteenth. Um, I know that it's been my I've been kind of part of those. I can't be there. I'll be up in Albany with the New York State Council of the Schools for the day. So I don't know if that makes a difference. I know I think it's um, then uh, Ms. Guido and Ms. Lau, who will be there. I don't know if that makes a difference, or if you just want to go ahead anyway, that's fine. But I just want to make sure you do that. I'm fine with that. We canceled the last one, so. Mm -hmm. we with the attending mm -hmm. as well? Okay. Let me give the time and place again. It's 9 a.m. at Monkey Joe's. Okay. Tuesday, January 13th, 9 a.m. Monkey Joe's. These lovely ladies to answer your question. The second uh, thing for I was I would like to request the board consider. Um, we have a board meeting on March 18th. If the board would consider moving that board meeting to March 25th. <laughs> I'll make a motion uh, that we consider amending the board meeting calendar to make the second meeting of the month in March on the 25th as opposed to the 18th. Mm -hmm. Any discussion about that? No. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Anyone opposed? Right. And what school is that going to be on? The school gets out. No, no, I mean, what school would that need to be out? Oh, it's a yeah. school? Thank you. I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, any board member announcements? Mr. Shaw. Um, there will be a meeting tomorrow night of the uh, Austin County School Boards Association at the um, Conference Center at Ulster and Pelosi's headquarters on the 32nd at 6 o'clock. The meeting starts at 6.30. It will be a dinner, like the at 6 o'clock. And it will be meeting with our legislative representatives. Thank you very much. I know we have a few people signed up to the time. So. Okay, any other board announcements? All right, I would like to announce that the board is having a board retreat on Monday evening at 5 p.m. 5 p.m.? 5 30? 5 30, I'm sorry. I stay corrected. In this room. And um, I would like to know if you would like my husband to make soup. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I move my husband to make soup. Is there a second? Yes. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Um, and in addition, the raw salad. If you have not yet returned your board evaluation, I know we've given information to the facilitator for the retreat already based upon what was turned in from the October self evaluations. I think even those who are new in October probably have a better handle now on, on um, how the board functions. So if you could. Please get your evaluation to, you know, 
as soon as possible for Monday so that we have everybody's evaluation on hand for the evening. Okay, there we All right, we've reached a portion of the agenda where we welcome public participation. Is there anyone who would like to address the board at this point? Please come forward. Anybody? Then, since we have uh, no need for a second executive session, so we have no action to change that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you very much.